Hello guys, Dan here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to play now enough any PlayStation 2 game on PC. Now first of all you want to navigate to the description right underneath this video and download the zip file called PS2 Emulator Files. Now you want to right click on here and click Extract, and this guys is all the files you will need to get playing PlayStation 2 games on PC. And once you've extracted the folder using something like 7-zip or WinRAR, you want to double click on the file. Uh, the folder, sorry, and then inside here you should find the latest version of PCSX2, uh, version 1.2.1, and then you should also find some PlayStation 2 BIOS files. This is for PAL and NTSC, so if you guys live in Europe or uh, Japan, Australia, uh, America, this should work wherever you are in the world, really. Now, first of all, you want to install the uh, software, so PCSX2. So, right click, click as run as administrator, and click yes. Um, next up, this screen will pop up, just a normal kind of setup for a piece of software, just click the good old next button and install. This shouldn't take long at all, it's only a few megabytes, uh, so yeah, once it's installed, just click the good old close button at the bottom, and then you want to just minimise this folder. Now you should get the piece of software, right click again, click as run as administrator, click yes, and then as you can see it'll say welcome to PCS, um, PCSX2. So this is a piece of software. Now, up here you want to just click your language or leave it as system default. You want to click the good old next button. And then here you, you will be prompted with the first time configuration of PCSX2. So you can choose and change these settings if you wish, but you're not but if you're not kind of into PCs and really don't know what all of these are, just click the next button. And um so now it's asking you for a BIOS ROM. Now typically you will get this from your own PlayStation 2 console, however, as, as it sounds down here, you need a legal copy of your PlayStation 2 BIOS. I provided this for you so you guys can get going. So first of all, you want to be clicking um, just off this uh, use default setting, and what you want to do is just click on the good old start button, click on computer, go to your main drive, which um, is, is the C drive in your case, right click, new, and then create a folder called P S2 BIOS, then click the enter button. Now going back to the files that we extracted, you want to copy every single one of these files, just select every single file, and then you want to copy that into the PS2 folder. So let's just bring this uh, folder back up. So you just want to drag all of these files into here, and you just want to copy them there. It's good to keep them in the original location just if you need them a little bit better. Now on here you want to be clicking on browse, and then you want to be clicking on the folder that you've just created. So in our case, it's the PS2 BIOS in the C drive. So now you've clicked on here, you want to be clicking on the actual um, you know, console BIOS for your country. So you can choose from USA, Japan or Europe. The Europe one will also work for you guys in Australia. And as far as I'm aware, United States works for both North and South America. That's all good. So I click on your BIOS. In my case, I'm going to be clicking on the Europe version 2. This is the 2004 console BIOS of the PS2. And then just click the good old finish button. And once you've clicked to this, you'll be prompted with this screen. You should have a program log and also the actual emulator up here, the PlayStation 2 emulator. Now, next up, you do want to configure just a few settings. And you're going to tell the program um, just some of your keyboard controls, or in my case, the 360 controls. Because since these games that I'm, that I'm wanting to play, stuff like Resident Evil and um, Crash Bandicoot and all stuff like that, I, I've always typically used a controller with a console, because that's all you can. So I'm going to configure my Xbox 360 controller to work with these PlayStation 2 games. And also just going to just going to apply some general settings like the speed hacks and stuff like that. So if you want to kind of follow along and set some of these settings up, um, you can. So first of all, we're going to be going to the config, click on emulator settings, and you want to go to speed hacks and you want to enable this. And then you should enable all three of these. In this case, it's enabled, but sometimes it won't be. Now, once you've done that, you want to click the good old OK button. And then you want to go down to controls and click on the plugin settings. Now I'm using the 3.6 control, so I'm going to leave that like that. And then you want, and then you want to be kind of telling the program what buttons on the controller or your keyboard that you want to work. Now in my case, like I said, I am going to be putting the 360 controls into this program. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is just clicking on the buttons here. So say I click up, and I'm going to be clicking up on the D-pad on the 360 controller. So as you can see, it's picked that up as an X input pad 0. And on the PC, it's going to be D-pad up, and PS2, it's going to be up. So I can put the down, the left, and the right. Now the square on know was the bottom control on the... Um, controller, so I'm going to be clicking A on the 360 controller, and our triangle is where the Y should be, circles where the B should be, and the cross is where the X should be. 
Same with the triggers, I'm going to be clicking left trigger, right trigger, and now left trigger, right trigger. And then as well as this, start button is going to be the start button on the 360 controller, and then select is going to be what's called the back button on the 360 controller. Now I'm just going to fast forward this video so you guys should kind of get the gist now, and I'll see you once I'm done. So I've now done this and I can now click apply. Now if you guys are also wanting to add a control number two, so and say you wanted to do this for say your keyboard, all you would have to do is click up and then on your keyboard you just click the up arrow key and then say say if you want your actual um, you know V key to be the say the triangle, you just click it and it should register like that. In my case I don't want this, I'm just gonna click clear and just click OK. Now once you've done this, there's one last thing to do, and the one last thing to do is to change the audio settings, as I've found that the, that the ones that are already on don't really work that well. So I'm going to go to configuration, you want to go to audio and click on the plugin settings for the audio, and then as you can see up here you want to be clicking the module 4 to module 2, and as you can see in the brackets it does actually say nice, so nice audio that's it. Once, you can, once you've clicked on there, you want to be also changing the mixing settings, and then in this case it's the interpolation chest setting we're changing, and what you want to be doing on here is clicking on number 3, so you get better highs. Click OK, and you're all good to go. Now all you need to do now guys is grab your good old PS2 game, put it in your PC and bend the ISO. If you don't want to do that, as soon as you actually know you own the game, um, you can actually download the ISOs from say Pirate Bay and um, places like that. In my case, I have my Resident Evil Outbreak 1 ISO in this folder here. Now, I will say that the ISOs, um, to my understanding, like 99% of them all work. It's all good. This emulator will kind of work all of the ISOs. There's a few games like The Sims 2 and stuff like that don't work. Now, all I'm going to be doing now is clicking on System, clicking on the... Actually, where is it? Oh, yeah. Um, C, DVD you want to be clicking on. ISO selector and click on browse. Now once you're here, click on desktop and then click on the, the folder which it is. So mine's the RE01. So it isn't even that brick. So click on the good old ISO there and click open. Once this is done, you click on system and you click boot C DVD full. Click that. And now you should be able to see that this is the PS2 starting up. And once it's actually started up, um, there we are, PS2, you should actually be able to use the controller and your keyboard with the game. So if I click up and down, there we are, look, and then click A, and voila, so I start game. There we are, all done. And you have access to all memory cards and everything, you have two 8 MB memory cards by default. You can change that in the settings, but I haven't really covered this in this video. Also, I do want to say Resident Evil Outbreak is actually a PS2 exclusive, it was never released for any other console. So playing this on PC is pretty special, and I will say you can double click on this window to make the game full screen. I'm not going to do that though, because it might kind of stop my recording, but as you can see, look, Resident Evil Outbreak is working. I can click start and play the game, it's as good as that. As you can see, look, full control. And uh, yeah, it works very well. I'm actually using the 360 controller now, so it's uh, it's all good. I can click play, and yeah, it all works. It's really, really good. It really is good indeed. Anyway, guys, thank you for checking out this kind of tutorial on how to play PlayStation 2 games on a PC. If you found it helpful and uh, you've actually been able to get this working, give me a good old thumbs up. It'll really help me out. And yeah, if you have any questions, because I know this kind of tutorial was a little bit advanced, if you guys do have any questions, please feel, please feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I should get back to you in a decent amount of time. Hello anyway guys, thank you for kind of watching, please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.